Hi, in this short video, I'll be presenting data programming, a new approach to weekly supervising machine learning models using programmatically generated training data. Our problem is motivated by the challenge of collecting enough training data for today's machine learning methods. Currently, this is a big problem. Collecting hand-labeled training data is expensive, especially when domain experts are required. It's incredibly slow. Creating something like an ImageNet takes years of planning and execution. And it's static. Applications in the real world evolve iteratively, but hand-labeled training data sets do not. Let's consider an information extraction problem as an example. Here we're trying to extract mentions of genes that cause certain phenotypes from the scientific literature. The traditional way we'd approach this is that we'd ask some genomicists to label some training data for us, and then we'd spend some time engineering features for the model. Increasingly today, people use approaches like deep learning to obviate the need for this manual feature engineering. However, these methods require even larger training sets than ever before, effectively shifting the pain point. In data programming, we enable users to programmatically generate training data by writing labeling functions, which are just black box functions that describe a process of labeling a training set. And they enable users to quickly create large, albeit noisy, training sets just using standard scripting languages. The data programming pipeline goes as follows. First, users write a set of labeling functions which leverage various heuristics and weak supervision resources specific to their domain and task. We then estimate the relative accuracies of these labeling functions automatically by observing their overlaps and disagreements, which results in a generative model. We then use the predictions of this generative model to train our discriminative model in a noise-aware fashion. In other words, we minimize the expected loss with respect to the generative model's predictions. Crucially, both modeling phases are needed for optimal end performance. So what do labeling functions look like? Let's consider an example where we'll express a traditional distance supervision approach as a labeling function. Here we'll say that if a gene and a symptom that are known to be connected occur in a sentence, we'll label it as true. Here we see this is actually correct. However, we see other examples where this would be incorrect. In data programming, we learn the accuracies of each labeling function to take this noise into account. More generally, labeling functions serve as a unifying framework for various weak supervision techniques, such as distance supervision, crowdsourcing, ensembling of weak classifiers, or direct application of domain-specific heuristics and rules. We can also model the correlations between the labeling functions within our framework. On the theory side, we show an exciting result, which is that by writing a constant number of labeling functions, we can achieve the same asymptotic scaling with respect to generalization risk that supervised methods do, except in our case, with respect to feeding in more unlabeled training data. Experimentally, we show that on text relation extraction applications, we get improvements over prior distance supervision methods, both using human-created features and deep learning models, including a new competition-winning score on the TAC KVP 2014 slot filling challenge. Since writing the paper, we've implemented a new lightweight information extraction framework around data programming called Snorkel, which we've begun validating with users in fields ranging from bioinformatics to political science. We're also working on extending this to applications beyond text, such as tables, images, and diagrams, to automatically learn the structure of correlations between labeling functions, and to adding new feedback loops between the generative and discriminative models and the user. We're excited to talk about any and all of this at our poster on Monday night. See you then.